Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 290, featuring a retrospective of a game I've been wanting to cover here on Matt Chat for quite some time, Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. Now this is a steampunk uh, themed uh, role-playing game, debuted back in 2001, and it uh, got a lot of hostile reviews uh, in the press because of the bugs and uh, glitches in it. Uh, but I'm happy to say a lot of those concerns have been addressed uh, by Troika as well as uh, fan patches. And there's a lot of uh, great community support around it that have uh, alleviated a lot of those uh, issues. Anyway, I had a lot of fun with it and I want to uh, share my thoughts with you. So, without further ado, here is Arcanum. And here we go, folks, with a game I've been really wanting to review on the show for years now. It's always something else got in the way, but no longer. The time has come to review Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. A lot of people consider this to be one of Tim Kaine's masterpieces. Of course, he's the guy that did uh, the first two uh, Fallout games, which I think it's safe to say those are better than this. Uh, but this game definitely has its appeal, and I really, really enjoyed this uh, steampunk setting. Now, when this set debuted back in 2001, it had a lot of issues, lots of bugs and glitches, uh, problems with graphics hardware. They had this really obnoxious copy protection scheme that certainly didn't help matters, but um, I'm happy to say the user community has done a good job patching everything up, and you could pretty much play this without having to worry about bugs or uh, real serious glitches, and there's even some nice uh, interface improvements. So, in short, if you've been putting off uh, playing this game for whatever reason, now is a really good time to get into it. Lots of challenge, lots of fun, <laughs> a little bit of frustration, but there's lots of uh, cool stuff about the game. So, let's get into it. Ah, there's that old Troika Games logo. Wonderful company. Of course, a lot of these guys uh, worked in inter Interplay on the Fallout series. Tim Kaine, of course. Uh, they also did uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, another great game I reviewed on the show. You know, really, with all those games, uh, it's pretty much the Troika method, I guess. You know, they get all this great talent, uh, doing great stuff, great ideas, but the, the execution's always a bit off. The management, production, I don't know what happens, but they... Seemed like they always would uh, run out of money and time uh, right towards the end and then end up having to rush something through the door uh, just to keep the, the lights on. And, of course, uh, <laughs> you know, that's going to lead to problems, a lack of polish, a lack of uh, beta testing, uh, just all kinds of difficulties. But, you know, it, it's still, they managed to put out some uh, really good games. Just, I think, pretty much all of them, we could say, have their flaws that could have been addressed with a little more time. Uh, now this game is interesting because you have the turn-based or the real-time combat. It's a little different. It's not quite like either the Fallout game or the uh, Baldur's Gate series, the way they do the real-time with pause. But, you know, it's easy enough to, to learn how to play. Uh, it's also a multiplayer option. I haven't really experimented with that, but it sounds pretty cool. Now, if you want to get up and going uh, real quick, you can just pick the player. they got all these really cool uh, pre-made characters with backstories and really nice. I really like the character portraits in this game. Man, they just, <laughs> that guy looks a little like Tom Selleck. Uh, but you can read all this, you know, look, look at the way they have put these characters together, their stats and so on to give you some ideas. I always like to create my own characters, but it definitely does. It's not never a bad idea to take a look at some of the pre-mades just to to get a feel for what the developer seems to think is uh, a good build. Yeah, I'm looking through all these portraits. As you can tell, uh, there's definitely a nice steampunk vibe that they've worked throughout the whole game. The interface here even has a sort of a steampunkish look to it. Always, you know, appreciate those little details. Uh, let's see, humans. Got quite a, a standard sort of fantasy races, but everything's going to be a little interesting because of the steampunk setting. It's not classic uh, fantasy. We'll have uh, <laughs> machinery to contend with. And quite of a, you know, as with Tim Kaine's, there's always that sort of social commentary, political commentary angle. Uh, definitely we're going to see some racism in this game, some uh, class consciousness. And of course, plenty of brothels and weird <laughs> fetish-like stuff. <laughs> 
Oh boy. Uh, let's see. Also, we got a male half orc. My first character I played was a was a half elf, so I think I'll try the half orc this time. Uh, by the way, the manual for this game is pretty much required reading, and it's a good 100, 150 plus pages. And they go into lots and lots of detail about these races and the history of this world and sort of the political situation. It's a, it's a really, really well done, well written manual. If you haven't looked at that yet, uh, be sure to check it out. There's even a recipe in there, another Tim Kaine specialty. <laughs> he's always got his recipes uh, in there somewhere. Ah, and then we got our backstory. So you see those are kind of cool because you get a positive, but there's also a negative. Just makes the character a little more interesting to play. You know, don't I don't always want to go for that min-max and just focus on the quote-unquote best character. You know, throw a few wrinkles in there just to kind of keep things interesting. So basically we have five points to spend and a lot of places we could put those points. And you don't get a lot of points. Uh, you know, five is not that many, so you really want to put some thought into this. Now what we have, you've got skills you could put a point into. You've got those stats you could put points into. Uh, you can use the points to learn recipes or magic spells. You know, there's just a lot uh, to consider here. Uh, however, some of the skills and stats, of course, are related. And some of the crafting comes in. One of the examples is uh, if the manual gives it's kind of enlightening is uh, the uh, there's a skill or there's recipes you can learn to make grenades and bombs right uh, but to get any use out of that you have to have the throwing skill which I believe relies it's either dexterity or perception uh, for that to work so that's just the kind of thing you would need to consider of course uh, a lot of the game is going to be dialogue and working your way through uh, character interactions so they've got beauty and charisma. It goes along with that. And by the way, these are nicely lined up here. Uh, the ones on the left, strength, constitution, dexterity, and beauty. Uh, those are your bodily, bodily, your physical traits. And the ones on the right, intelligence, willpower, perception, and charisma, are the mental uh, side of things. So it's a very interesting, very well thought out system. We also have this health or hit points as one stat. And then the uh, fatigue is going to be a blue meter. And that's going to be important for all classes, but especially for mages, because that's what you use up when you cast spells, is your fatigue counter there. You'll also notice over there on the right side, there's this bar with the blue thingamabob on top and the gear on the bottom. That's related to whether you specialize in magic or the technological side of the game. And again, it's a very nuanced system. Lots of choices you could make. You could probably start to get a feel here, too. This, if you think about the design-wise, how monumental of a task it would have been to properly support and balance all of these different character options. You know, one of the criticisms I saw repeatedly about the game was that the uh, magical characters are a lot more powerful than the technological characters. So I don't really know enough about the game myself to know if that's true or not, or maybe it Maybe some of these uh, patches have addressed those concerns. I'd like to hear your your opinion on it. But that's basically what people tell me about the game. Is uh, you know, it was a great idea, but you just didn't quite uh, have enough time to properly balance it out. You know, make sure that all the different kinds of characters would be equally fun to play, and you know, and roughly equal in power. You know, one thing I'm kind of worried about with those characters. I'm looking at these uh, derived stats down there. It says max followers one. I think that's uh, related to either beauty or charisma. I'm going to have to think about that because it would be pretty difficult to play the game with only one follower. And my other guy had two followers and that felt like <laughs> I could have used uh, three or four more uh, with some of those battles. So that would definitely be a factor. He looks like he's fast enough and he can carry a good, good portion. That was uh, another downfall from, with my other character. He kept... Uh, getting encumbered just with his armor alone. Ah, let's see. Nice suit. Um, uh, I just don't have enough money. I better sell that suit and see if I can get uh, some kind of weapon or armor or something. Oh, man. I, <laughs> I think I might have screwed up selling my suit. I really want to get those uh, lock picks over there, though, because... Uh, you do find lots of stuff that needs to be picked open. Now you need the lock picks to be able to do that. I guess I'll just go ahead and buy those. 
And hopefully I'll be able to find some clothes. Anyway, I'll uh, shut up a little bit and let you watch this movie because it's really, really cool. Help me, please. Oh, thank you, my friend. I haven't got much time. <coughs> you must find the boy. Find the boy and give him back his ring. Now he will know what needs to be done. <coughs> now listen, listen to me. We had to do it. He did unspeakable things to us, and we, we had no choice but to do as he said. And there are so few of us left, but the work is almost finished, and then the evil, oh, you can't imagine. He's coming back to destroy everything, everything and everyone. Now, please, just find the boy. <coughs> Tell him that I escaped. I came back to warn. <coughs> he will know what to do. You, my friend, it's all up to you. I can't believe it. I mean, you and and then the zeppelin and, and the fire and the altar says that. Do you have any idea what all of this means? Ah, it's Virgil. Good old Virgie. You speak! I, I mean, of, of course you speak. What am I, a blathering idiot? Wait, what, what did you say? Maybe I should be writing all of this down. <laughs> you probably should write some stuff down, because the, the journal in this game doesn't tell you everything. I am at a loss here. I, I, I don't quite know what to do. Uh, I mean, you are the... Oh, of course you are. I mean, you do know who you are, right? Of course you do. What, what, what sort of brainless, half-baked question is that for the, the, uh, the, uh, what, what, what do you call yourself? Please forgive me. I, I'm making a bloody mess of this whole affair. My name is Virgil, sir, and I'm new to the Benari religion. Uh, your religion, and I. Oh, oh, oh! Wait, I. Uh, hereby dedicate, no, no, uh, commit my life to the living one. I, Virgil, am at your service, sir. Yeah, I think my tidy whities just make me look all the more godlike. Yes, yes, of course you're not really him, just his reincarnation. I, I mean, that is the case, right? I have to admit, I'm no expert in elven philosophy or, or prophecy, Bloody confusing, you know. All those these thous. <laughs> not, not that it's not interesting. Um, <clears throat> yes, right. Uh, just give me a moment here. You, you see, the Panari, 
that's the religion that was formed around the things that he said. I, I mean, that you said. Oh, forget it. Let, let's start at the beginning. Or this beginning, since there is a lot more that came before this. You are the reincarnation of a powerful elf who the Panari worship and whose name is, uh... Right. Yes, uh, the name. Uh, wait. I remember something. It is written in the scriptures. The living one will live again on wings of fire. No, 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 wait. I think it says, reborn on wings of fire. Oh, blood and ashes. Why do elves always have to be so damn cryptic? You must take the ring to Mordor. Mm. I don't know about the ring, but this business about the evil one returning. Oh, as I've said, I don't know a whole lot about the Panari prophecies, but I think you were supposed to return and fight someone evil. Oh, bloody hell, I should know more of this. I would like to clear up your confusion, but I am new to the Panari religion myself. I must bring you to meet my mentor, Elder Joachim. He can answer your questions. He is in Shrouded Hills, a town at the base of these mountains. The path out of here leading down to Shrouded Hills is down to the southeast. We'll stop by the Panari Shrine on the way out. See if it makes any of this any more clear. We should look for any other survivors before we leave, though. What do you think? Well, we just got a big old dumping of exposition there, but at last we are good to go. So let's see, he's got some matchbooks, got a passport. Not much else. I don't think I can wear those that matchbook or the passport. It looks like some corpses around here. I should be able to get the clothes off of them, I guess. Let's see. Nothing to loot. Oh, come on. He's clearly got a suit on. There we go. What is this? St some steel. One of my major gripes with the game is this inventory system. And I know I've... I've a lot of games uh, really fail at that, so no point really singling this game out. But man, it gets to be so tedious. You have to try to find just the right salesperson that'll buy whatever type of merchandise it is, and your inventory fills up really quick. Then you get encumbered, and <laughs> it's just kind of a big pain. I don't know if they lessen that up later in the game, but I mean, it's almost bad enough to make you want to download some kind of patch or a mod or something. I'm just picking up all this junk. Like I said, I don't know if I'll be able to sell this. Hopefully somebody will buy it. You know, that, that huge uh, recipe book, all those different stuff you can make and herbals, all that, just means you're always picking up stuff. All right, here we go. Some combat. That didn't take too long. I guess I'm probably about 10 minutes in. Got some ailing wolves. I feel like a, an ailing wolf sometimes. I mean, you just kick that wolf. <laughs> Have a thief. A foot right up his right up his sphincter there. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty funny image. This, this guy in this guy in his underwear just kicking at boars and wolves. <laughs> a, I could do this all day. That's uh, yeah. There you go. Nice sound effect on that. Uh, where's that boar going? I guess he's intimidated by my feet of fury. Miss, miss, miss. I've only got a 35% chance to hit this guy. Did you notice uh, my my hand-to-hand uh, -hand fighting actually does some fatigue damage as well. So I'm hitting his fatigue and his health bar. That's kind of cool. Alright, let's see. Surely there's a some kind of jacket or something I could put on around here. Yeah, maybe I'll get lucky with this guy. Uh, looks like more components. Always with the components. Oh, another doggy. <laughs> there we go. I just kicked him down. And I don't even need an axe in this game. I can just punch everything. Let's see. I think there's a cave around here somewhere. And what I wouldn't give just for, you know, just a little more resolution on the screen. It seems like you only can see like two feet around you. What is this? It seems a strange flying device, but much smaller than the blimp. 
I've never seen anything like it. And isn't that an ogre among the wreckage? It seems very unlikely that an ogre would have the intelligence to fly such a complex device. Do you see that strange amulet that he's wearing? And that symbol on its face? I don't recognize it. Do you? Ah, uh, something isn't quite right about all of this. I don't remember the, uh, scriptures talking about flying ogres and the like. We'd better get to Shrouded Hills and find Elder Joachim as soon as possible. And be careful. These wolves are none too friendly. Thanks for that, Virgil. Man, I was trying to pet those wolves back there. Uh, inventory's already starting to fill up with junk. Hopefully some of that'll be salvageable. Oh, there's another boar. And this is the lesser boar. <laughs> Man, wouldn't it suck to be called lesser in front of your name? I'll give these guys credit for one thing, man. There's, you know, I like a role-playing game that just starts you off with, with nothing. And, and this guy doesn't even have pants. I mean, <laughs> you want to start from scratch, this is it. He's going to literally rise from kicking and clawing at the bad guys to hopefully whacking off their head with some giant magic axe at some point. Now one thing you want to do quite often, man, just save, 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 because death comes often and swiftly, and you don't want to have to reload. Now, there is a quick save, but, uh... Oh, what do we have here? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Sewer rats, baby! I'm not in the sewer, but I don't care. Now let's go for these guys. Come come here, you! Get your butt over here! Gah! How's it going? There we go. I'm punching these guys. Just punching them rats. Rat punches. Hell yeah. It's punch. Punch. It's like it's almost like I'm there punching. Oh man, this is. Look at that nice little pile of bloody rat corpses. It just doesn't get better than this. You know, I would be satisfied just just right there. You know, that's just the whole rest of the game. Me running around this this uh, cave fighting sewer rats. That's all I really ask for, you know? I don't even have to have armor. Just, uh, I'm okay with being in my underwear and not having a weapon. Just put a damn rat in a cave! You know, Tim Kane gets it, man. He, he just gets it. I don't wonder if anybody else has ever been dumb enough to sell their only suit of clothes and then play the whole first part of the game in their underwear. Alright, here's a little story element I think that we're leading up to our first side quest I was cursed by an evil priest and as you'll soon see in this game you can't really trust anybody everybody lies <laughs> this is Tim Kane we're talking about here folks so don't ever take anybody at face value because you never really know what kind of bastards they are so I don't know What's really the best course of action here? I guess we'll just go check him out anyway. See if his story fits. Now there's a weapon. We got a gun, a pistol. Yeah, that's something you don't see. And most of these fantasy games also has some grenades. And you definitely want to hold on to these babies because they will prove very useful. Some of the really, there's a really, really tough battle right at the start of the game, pretty early on. It's, those grenades are going to come in quite handy for. Also, there's a, a bed. <laughs> Why is there a bed in this dungeon? I, you know, come to think of it, that's not a bad idea. I could rest up, kill some rats. Okay, there's another wolf. I got this railroad spike, but it's actually not as uh, good of a weapon as just hand-to-hand -hand combat, unfortunately, because it doesn't do that fatigue damage like my fists and feet do. And it looks a little... I don't know, does that look better? <laughs> you know, the animation probably could have been better, but... Uh, you know. I, I think I would like to see if they ever remade this game. Man, just let me zoom out a little bit. God, I wish I could zoom out. It really gets kind of hard to, to play when you're running around the city sometimes. You have to keep looking at the map and... You can't just click anywhere and have them run there like they would in Baldur's Gate. You have to use these 
waypoints. Ah, so I've leveled up. I am now level two. And I can I'll show you that screen in a second. Just wanna still holding out hope against hope that I'll be able to find some something to wear before I have to go to town. There's a campfire there. Maybe there's a maybe there will be some uh, uh, somebody there. Let's run on over. I mean, wouldn't that be terrifying to some guy at a some <laughs> half work to boot come running out of the woods and <laughs> wearing nothing but his his uh, briefs? That would scare the crap out of me. No, nope, no loot there. Yeah, I got a little alien guy. The hell is that thing supposed to be? Wolf dispatch. Kite shaman. Kite shammy. Are you blind? What in God's I I mean better luck next time. Oh, he's tough. So you notice how when he's casting his spells, so he's using up his fatigue, and plus I can if I was uh, using my hand-to-hand -hand combat I could damage him that way. So he wouldn't be able to cast those spells. Alright, let's check out this guy's uh uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, see if you notice when I put that weapon, it actually goes down to six. It's actually doing more damage with my my hands and feet. Oh, look, there's some cool stuff in the chest. I don't think the fire does anything. At least not that I know of. Okay, I should probably save it at this point. Oh, uh, my god. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe I just did that. Oh. oh, man. I guess quick load is F7 or F8. See, that's why I don't use the quick save. You know, it's just too easy to hit the wrong button and then <laughs> lose it all. It's okay. Just had to go back and catch back up. So, yeah, I'm doing better. I think I might be doing a better damage with just no weapons at all. That's kind of... Kind of sad. Yeah, look at that. He's better off just kicking people. All right, I got a pretty full inventory there already, so it's definitely time to be heading into town. Might as well go ahead and spend my precious skill point. Level 2! So the cool thing about these uh, skills, I kind of took a page from the Might and Magic games, and you have uh, trainers that can train you up from Apprentice at level 1. You get 3 points in there, then you can go to Expert, and then if you max it out at five, then you find a master trainer and become a master. And uh, when you do that, you get some really nice perks. Uh, for example, with the melee at the apprentice level, you get a speed boost of five when you have a melee weapon. Uh, at the expert level, you're unaffected by lighting penalties. Unaffected by lighting penalties. Okay, not <laughs> sure what that means. Uh, at the master level, then you uh, cannot critically fail with a melee weapon. Critical failures are really, I mean, that can happen with any skill. Uh, basically, you, you bungle it so badly, you end up uh, damaging your weapon or even damaging yourself somehow. So it's kind of nice if you don't have to worry about that. That would be quite an excellent perk, and some of them are even cooler than that. Probably the best is the persuasion. If you get that up to master, then you can recruit uh, any characters regardless of the alignment. Uh, really cool. The altar should clear things up for us a bit. Hmm. It says, uh... And the spirit of Nazredin shall be reborn on wings of fire in hills shrouded in fog and fight the last battle with the evil one. And who is the evil one? <sighs> I'm sorry, but I don't know. <laughs> I guess we better find out, considering you're supposed to fight him. That's probably a good idea. Yes, of course. I love the music in this section. The soundtrack, by the way, is Ben Hogue's work, and you can actually download the sheet music for it. It's pretty cool. I'm actually playing the enhanced version here, which sounds better than the original. I mean no disrespect, uh, sir, but I don't trust this bastard one bit. Bloody convenient he just happened to show up here just now, don't you think? Well, didn't you just kind of oh, show up, Excuse my Rachel? language, uh, sir. I've uh, dealt with buggers, uh, <laughs> individuals like this before. Perhaps you'll let me talk with him for a few minutes? No. Fine. 
I'm sure you know what's best to do. But be careful with him. I don't like the look in his eye. How do I want to play this? It's a uh, it's gonna be kind of tricky convincing him that I didn't survive the crash, seeing as I'm standing here in my underwear. Maybe he won't notice. So you weren't on that blimp. <laughs> Are you doubting my words, sir? Aren't you full of questions? I just saw the crash, wanted to see if there were any survivors. <laughs> I don't like the tone, boy! There we go. <laughs> He's punching too. I think if he did show up to kill somebody, he would have brought some weapons. This man was a hired killer. Someone doesn't want anyone walking away from this blimp crash. Hmm. Yes. That may very well be the case. It might be a good idea to find out who owns that ring. Yes. Let's go to Shrouded Hills. Shrouded Hills. Sounds like some kind of really morbid retirement community. All right, let's go. <laughs> Sir, you might wish to consult your map. I believe there might be a quicker way to Shrouded Hills. Oh, is that so? That's a not-so-subtle way to let us know that we're about to enter the world map. Another of the game's many annoyances. You can't just go to this map whenever you want. But you gotta run all the way to the edge of a city. Which doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but the interface is kind of awkward. Makes it a bigger pain than it should be. There's some tombstones there. First clue, There's some blood. Second clue, son, the goddesses may forgive your lack of attire, but the people are another matter entirely. Okay, so they did, see that's pretty fun, man. They actually anticipated that uh, somebody would be here in their, in their boxers. <laughs> hey, Matt, well, I guess he'll overlook it. Well, my family was brutally slaughtered by two madmen. So pretty much the exact opposite of what those other guys said. So, I don't know, should I believe this guy? Probably. He's a priest, I suppose, and his family's dead. Marcus decided he didn't want to share. Uh, nice little moral of the story. I there had to be more to it. He wants me to recover an artifact. Uh, let's see, that depends. Are you gonna pay me for this? Not one who gathers material possessions. Give you a little hint though, he does give you something pretty darn cool if you go through with it. I really like the graphics. I mean, look at that bed. Really nice uh, details. You know, I kind of prefer this isometric 2D type of graphics over the like Neverwinter Nights when it made the shift to 3D. There's just something about this style that I just like the look of it better. Let's go check out this cave and uh, report back to uh, what's his face. So you're kind of getting a feel probably for how long, how much of the game you're going to be spending watching this guy <laughs> run across all these screens. You know, it would have been nice just to have some way to instantly go back. Charles Brigo, I had a conversation. I need to talk to the friend that killed you. You are a liar, my friend. <laughs> uh, this guy's a real bastard. Okay, shall I lie to him? Yeah. I'll convince Arbala to release you if you help me lie. You would, wouldn't you? That's one thing about these noble types. Marcus, please hurry, release me from the pain. Yeah, because releasing that murderer from his, the pain is my... <laughs> That's my top priority. Okay, I gotta go find his friend now and kill him. So here's how these waypoints work. So you, you gotta think maybe five of them and you, you have to space them out just right. They don't go too far. I don't really know what was going on with that in terms of uh, the engine, why that was necessary. It'd be so much nicer if I could just click on the map where I want to go and just have him do it himself. Instead of having to string together my own waypoints like that, but I'm guessing that was just one of those things where they ran out of time and money and had to, you know, any system's better than none, I suppose. I do like the look of this overland map. I really wish I could locate a box copy of this for a reasonable price. Seems like they're going anywhere from 60, 60 on up on eBay. Uh, I did not have a cloth map, but the box is really nice, and of course I have the printed manuals, so. 
Alright, this guy is not here, so I'm guessing I have to sleep. Catch him in the daylight. There he is! <laughs> Look at you with no dress. <laughs> Please excuse my presence. Uh, there is no excuse for worthless fools such as yourself. Uh, see, that's some of that half-orc prejudice coming through. Level 3 mob. Better luck next time. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to the difficulties of the monsters. I mean, as far as levels. You know, sometimes you can easily kill a level 20 monster, even though it's, you know, 10 levels above you. And then sometimes, you know, the monsters that, that are your same level or below will actually just slaughter you. So, it's unfortunately very random. At least it seems to be to, to me. I wasn't able to figure out what the dealio was. And here we go. Got to clear some space in the old inventory. What is it you want of me? Now, right about now is when you wish you were playing Pillars of Eternity, right? And you had that stash. <laughs> that was the... This problem right here is what that stash was trying to, to solve. It's a little annoyance. Uh, let's put some... Maybe just put some stuff in the old quick bar there. Cover a couple items. Uh, you can use your, your party members to carry stuff, too. Of course, they also have to deal with uh, encumbrance. You basically try, you don't want to get too encumbered because uh, that, you know, your fatigue will go down a lot faster and, you know, I don't think you can dodge as well. There we go. See, so he just gave me a blessing, which is a, basically a permanent bonus. Yeah, that's sweet. I don't know how many of those blessings are in the game. Seems like it must be several. Uh, that's definitely pretty cool. And you can see how you really want to do all these side quests that you can, because I'm already level 3 and haven't even got to Shrouded Hills yet. That's pretty sweet. Let's look in here at my journal. So it keeps, it keeps track of your story for you. you got lots of interesting stats in here. Reputations. I guess I don't have a reputation yet. Uh, it says I'm courteous with him. Just looking for it to see if it will tell me what that blessing does. Uh, it just says I got a blessing. Oh, what is the blessing? <laughs> Bless me. What does it do? I wanted to say it give you beauty or charisma last time, but I don't know. I wonder if it glitched or something. Uh, I think I might have a, a little glitch there because before I wanted to say it raised my beauty score up and made that blue. But anyway, let's get on out of here. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to go to Shrouded Hills in our underwear. Well, I'll tell you, I'll never make that mistake. Again. How the is staying at the inn next to the bank. All right. Let's, let's <laughs> Broad daylight. <laughs> are you down on your luck? Where are your clothes? <laughs> I've been in the most terrible thing. Uh, you mean the Zephyr? Yep. Yeah. Uh, no survivors. I guess this is the constable. Uh, let's see. Better. I don't know if I want to be a smart ass to him. I'll have to send a party to the site as soon as possible. Uh, let's see. What about that altar in the mountains? A group called the Panari. This is this religious group that Virgil's a part of. You know, and I'm wondering at this point. I haven't played far enough in the game to. You know, I haven't completed the game yet. And I'm very curious about Virgil. If he's a you know, might be a double agent or something. I mean, he seemed like a likable guy, but knowing Tim Kane, yeah, he could turn out to be a... Huh, I cannot at all consent to the state of your dress. And they're really not liking me. <laughs> being, they, they're real, they don't like the half-orc anyway. And just being in underwear is uh, not, con not helping. <laughs> your tone begs a beating. <laughs> A pleasure, my lord. Let's see, what services? Uh, so here's, he does the apprentice for a couple skills there. Repair, pick locks, disarm traps. Uh, let's see. Where, 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 where did that come from? Where did that rustic finery come from? Holy, how long have I had that? Okay, I don't, I didn't even see that go into the... In my inventory, I guess somebody must have felt sorry for me and gave it to me. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Bessie Tune. 
Well, anyway, this is, uh, I think this is enough of this intro. Uh, there's clearly a lot to enjoy here and savor. Lots of text to read, history to get to know. You got that big manual to read. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, skip forward and I'll show you my other party and what I was getting up to with them. So this party here, I've been playing them for about two days now. I guess I probably put something like 16, 18 hours into it. Uh, they, I've got Virgil, and then I have a dwarf that I found in the city. He seems to have some uh, deep connections to the plot, so I thought it'd be a pretty good idea to have him come along. And basically, I'm just doing side quests. I've uh, done quite a bit of work on the main quest line, but I don't want to show you that because it's kind of spoil it for you, I think. So, but Anyway, this is Arcanum uh, of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. A really cool game, uh, really interesting uh, places to go, characters to visit. Well, the politics are certainly very interesting. Uh, I noticed a lot of differences when I was playing the half-elf versus the half-orc and people's uh, responses to me. A lot of cool role-playing, uh, social elements to it. Uh, it has been criticized that people have complained about the dungeons being sort of uninspired. Uh, they don't have a lot of the cool stuff that you're used to seeing in other dungeons, you know, puzzles and hidden areas and things of that sort. Uh, so that's kind of a downer. But on the positive side, the cities and towns are really cool. And all the quests I received, I was interested enough in the story part of the quest to actually read it and care about what happened uh, to the characters. So that, that's always a good sign. Uh, the voice acting seems to be really good too. I guess the only real negatives I have about the game, uh, like I said, I didn't have I didn't have the game crashes or the bugs that uh, people were talking about uh, in the reviews, so I'm guessing that most of those must have been fixed. I didn't like getting around the town. It just it feels kind of herky jerky, and it's just more cumbersome and awkward than you would like. I mean, it's such an important part of a game like this ex exploration. Uh, you know, going to all the different parts of the town. And unfortunately, that's really cumbersome. You know, you're zoomed in like this. You can only see a small area at one time. And then this, that weird waypoint system, instead of just doing it uh, automatically, uh, just makes this a little more tedious than it needed to be. All in all, though, I'm really happy about the game. I like the look of it a lot. Uh, exploring the cities. Uh, well, you know, once you get beyond the interface issues, uh, there's lots of really cool places to check out. You know, look at that awesome looking train there. You know, I just I just like the steampunk setting. I'm not going to claim this game's as good as Baldur's Gate or the original Fallout series or anything like that, but it's definitely playable. It's definitely enjoyable and if you, you know, have played all the other, if you played through all the Infinity Engine games a couple of times, you you played through Wasteland 2, you played through Pillars of Eternity and you still got that itch. Well, this is a really good way to scratch it. Now, if you want to pick up a copy of this, it's on sale at GOG, that's GOG.com. Please use the link in my show notes, that way I'll get a small kickback from that. And it's on sale for $5.99 there. Of course, that's DRM-free, you get money-back guarantee and all that, so you can't go wrong. That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with a, a new interview series, uh, this time starring John Cutter. Uh, I think you're going to really enjoy that uh, series of interviews. About, about almost two hours worth of content with him, and it's a lot of great stuff, so stay tuned, especially if you're a Trailer Crondor fan. I know you're going to enjoy that. Okay. Oh, uh, what am I thinking? Uh, first of all, thank you very, very, very much for your support of Matt Chat. You guys have been amazingly wonderful to me, and I'm very grateful for all that you've done to support the show and also to tweet about the show and let other people know about the show. It really means a lot. I depend completely on guys uh, just like you to make all this happen. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, just go to the link in the show notes to the Patreon site and sign up for your subscription. Uh, or you could uh, just, if you don't happen to have Arcanum, uh, why don't you head over to GOG using my affiliate link in the notes, and, uh, you know, I'll probably get 10 cents or so uh, from that, but, uh, but hey, you know, and that's a lot better than nothing, and it doesn't cost you anything extra to do that, so thank you very much, you guys. 
All right, so not a lot of news uh, this week. Um, you know, tell you the truth, I've been super busy working on my uh, second edition of Vintage Games. It's Vintage Games 2.0. Uh, really trying to overhaul this book, and it's uh, t taking pretty much all of my free time. But hopefully this will result in a book that you will <laughs> want to own and, and enjoy. Uh, let's see, what other news here? Uh, this is kind of interesting. So apparently Nintendo... Oh, I forgot to do my news for the Mat Cave! Got to get that in there. Uh, okay, so here's the news. Uh, Nintendo is releasing five smartphone games. And apparently they have been a long time <laughs> really struggling with this. I don't know what it means. Uh, but they finally decided to go ahead and start releasing some of these, uh, some of their franchises, I guess, for a mobile market. It's kind of a big deal because, you know, Nintendo likes to work on their own hardware exclusively. Uh, also, there's, this is the first time they've shown an annual profit in four years, and they're uh, saying that's mostly because of these amiibo or amoeba <laughs> figurines. I don't even really know what those are. I think that might be uh, related to the Skylanders uh, series, though. Remember, I had a really good uh, interview with uh, Paul uh, Paul Ritchie uh, on that. Uh, also, uh, World of Warcraft was in the headlines. So they apparently have managed to lose three million subscribers in a little over, or a little under, maybe uh, three months. Uh, so that's kind of uh, kind of bad for them, a little bleak for them, I suppose. You know, I still play uh, World of Warcraft from time to time. Uh, so I hate to think that they, I mean, I guess they're still the number one in the world by a long shot, but, you know, still, uh, I wonder what they're going to, to do about that, if they even care. All right, now what about that ale of the week? Uh, well, this week I've got a little number called the Let It Ride. Uh, IPA India Pale Ale, and I you know, have to admit, you know, I hope I'm not repeating some of these ales. I I need to update my I haven't updated my list in a while, and it's kind of got to the point where it's hard for me to remember um, all the different ales I've tried on the show over the over the years now. So uh, I guess it, does, it doesn't really hurt to do one twice. Let's see, hop on for an adventure. I'm not supposed to hop onto the can. I <laughs> guess that would be kind of an adventure, wouldn't it? Uh, let's see. Riding a bike is all about freedom. What does that have to do with anything? Uh, let's see. IPA, brewed with mosaic, calypso, and Eldorado hops. Uh, America, and English crystal malts, and German dark, German dark Munich malt. This is an IPA with adventurous tendencies. Enjoy the aromas of blueberry, tropical fruit, and pear, and ponder where your next ride might take you. That's nice. Let's see, 6.8% alcohol by volume. Uh, so I'd say that's a little, you know, I wouldn't say that's a lot, uh, but it's definitely more than a typical beer would have. Uh, let's see, anything else here? Where are these guys located? Northeast Minneapolis, they have a tap room. Yeah, I guess these guys are based in Minneapolis, so... <laughs> You guys probably won't be able to find this. Uh, maybe you will, though. I don't know. Check it out. If you do uh, see this in your local shops, I'd be kind of interested to know about that. I really don't know how wide these things are distributed. Anyway, let's get this uh, Let It Ride open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Let It Ride here in the rather excellent drinking horn, and I'm still pondering the possible connections between the a sport of bicycling and the art of drinking fine ale. I'm not quite sure what the connection is. Maybe you could help me with that. But anyway, the aroma coming off of this is indeed, as they described on the on the can there, uh, fruity. They, I think they mentioned blueberries. I can I'm not quite smelling a blueberry, uh, but I'm definitely smelling some sort of a tropical fruity kind of a, a notes on that. A very nice aroma. You can smell the hops as well. Um, I think this will be a pretty good ale, so let's give it a taste. Definitely a, a bit of a bitter. Uh, it's a little bitter going down, then it sort of gets sort of toasty, uh, and then the hops start to kick in. I don't really taste the alcohol, but it definitely leaves you with kind of a bitter aftertaste as well, kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, 
a little bit of a burnt I like flavor. Uh, it's not bad, uh, but definitely don't even apply for this one if you don't like bitterness, which you probably wouldn't be drinking IPAs if you didn't like bitter uh, to begin with, though. Let me try it again. It's a... Uh, it's nice and thick, creamy. There's a, you know, usually it seems to go down real smooth, but then you sort of get these uh, uh, bitter bitterness and hoppiness uh, there towards the end. A little bit of a, actually, that's pretty much all I can taste here is the and the bitterness and the and the hoppiness to this. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, that's that's basically what we're dealing with here. Uh, something is it's nice, thick, creamy, bitter. Uh, not really very sweet, uh, just kind of a you know a fairly bitter IPA. Um, not really something I would want to just drink every day. I'm gonna go uh, three out of five. Drinking horns on it though, it's it's there's nothing really bad about it. Just uh, you know, there's lots of IPAs out there, and there's uh, some I like quite a bit better than this. Uh, but anyway, it's a three out of five. So check it out. Uh, definitely let me know if you uh, come across one of these at your local shop. Love to know how far these uh, things are distributed. All right, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was looking for quotes about uh, arcane, uh, something arcane. I found one from Khalil uh, Gibran. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And I, I thought this quotation really fit the uh, theme of the game rather well. Uh, so see if you agree. Anyway, it goes something like this. Art is a step from what is obvious and well known toward what is arcane and concealed. See you guys next week. What's the matter? Is staying alive too complicated for you?